Sonia K. Blair Adams. Um, Sonia was last seen at her home sometime in 1969. Few details are available. Uh, this is the story called Mountain Jane Doe. Um, this is the story of a young woman named Sonia K. Blair Adams, who was born April 24, 1948, and died sometime in 1969. She was murdered. She was from Letcher County, Kentucky. I'm going to tell a little bit about her. She was known as the Mountain Jane Doe or the Little Shepherd Girl. Uh, she was last seen at her home sometime in 1969. Her decomposed body was found on the Little Shepherd Trail on Pine Mountain by a man picking flowers. It was estimated that she had been dead for several weeks prior to the discovery of her body. Um, authorities did not believe that the girl was local to Harlan. Now, this story jumps ahead to 2009 when her daughter, Karen Stops, searched the database Name Us to try to find her mother, yet she wasn't listed. Her daughter then found out about the story of the Mountain Jane Doe. Meanwhile, in 2015, the woman's body was assumed and sent to the University of Texas and developed a DNA profile, and they were able to successfully match her um, in September 2016. It was announced that Mountain Jane Doe was identified as Sonia K. Blair Adams through DNA. Um, let's see, I've got some more pictures here. This was her as a child, and this was a picture of her that was taken around the time that she went missing. Now, try that one and see what it's got. I was hoping to find some information about her life prior to all this. I do know that she was married and had one child. Um, in the summer of 1969, this is from the website, uh, the Doe Network, a man picking flowers along the secluded Little Shepherd Trail in Harlan County, Kentucky, saw a body on the side of a hill. It was so decomposed it was hard to tell if it was a man or a woman. Now, 47 years later, the body has been identified using technology, um, DNA. The woman was Sonia K. Blair Adams. She had been stabbed multiple times in the chest, is how she died. And State Police Detective Josh Howard has been working this cold case since 2013. She was listed as one of the state's oldest cold cases. Um, so she was 21 years old when she was killed. She and her husband had divorced in 1967. Police haven't been able to find a report of anyone having reported her missing. Her naked body had been in the woods for around a month when it was found. Police did not release the name of the man who found her. He told police he went to the area to dig up some trees to replant at his home. He said that he found her body on June the 2nd, 1969. It is believed that someone had taken her to that spot to try to kill her, or to kill her, since they did, but they do not have a motive for the murder. She had a daughter who was less than a year old at the time, and the, the daughter was raised by her grandparents in Letcher County, Kentucky. Growing up, she always wondered where her mother was and why she never came back for her. Ultimately, she began to search and she made a connection to her mother's identification. Um, she says that she had always heard the story about the body being found on the mountain could be that of her mother, but it wasn't until 2009 that her daughter um, 
found a listing, or the the this would have been the granddaughter of the dead woman, found a listing for an unidentified woman on the uh, National Missing and Unidentified Person website, also known as NAMIS. This information had not been entered into the database until 2009. Uh, the daughter, Karen Stipes, contacted the state police and the Harlan County coroner um, Flyer Adams had been buried in Harlan County with a headstone that said unidentified female. Her body was exhumed and sent to the University of Texas where DNA was taken from the remains and it was a match to this girl. So this is really all they have to go on as far as prior, her life prior to this. Um, why no one did did anyone in her family ever you know offer to call the police and say you know our our daughter's missing our sister our cousin or whoever um, here is something from WCNC News ten. Daughter discovers her mother's identity after forty seven years. Um, two women spent decades searching for the identity of the same murdered woman for different reasons. They only lived 60 miles apart, but it wasn't until September of this year that they met. When you hear her story, it takes a hold of you. So many people have said when you let her in, you can't let her go, said Harlan historian and author Darla Jackson. In June of 1969, reports said a man picking flowers and cutting trees on Pine Mountain in Harlan County discovered the new decaying body of a young woman dumped in the woods. Police said she had multiple stab wounds. In 1969, DNA testing had not yet been discovered, and her body was so decomposed that no one could identify her. The people of Harlan County buried her in the woods in a pauper's grave. Um, buried with her was the mystery of who she was and what had happened to her. Over the next 47 years, she was known as Mountain Jane Doe. Um, as Jackson rediscovered the unidentified grave next to her family's property, she started researching Harlan County haunts. I've always been one. I, I don't like unsolved mysteries. I knew this woman had a name. I knew she had a family. I knew she belonged to somebody. She made it her goal to give Mountain Jane Doe back her identity. At times, I became very discouraged. When I would visit this place and I would see the grave, it made it so real to me. I would say, here she is. Who is she? Now, Karen Stops grew up without so much as even a picture of her mother or a grave site to visit. She was adopted by her paternal grandparents when she was a baby. When I was little, I always thought that maybe she would come and get me. Um, says Karen Stops of Coburn, Virginia. Then when I was around 10, I began to hear that maybe my mother had died. Some people referred to it as she had died at the Little Shepherd Trail. So now this tells you that somebody knew something. If this woman was unidentified, then how did the family know enough about this to say, she died at Little Shepherd Trail. Little Shepherd Trail is a trail in, on Pine Mountain in Harlan County, and I guess Harlan and Letcher County kind of share this mountain. And I've been to, you know, Pine Mountain many times. I've been to the Little Shepherd Trail area. I didn't know about this story at that time, but it's probably more developed now than it was in 1969 but it's really more just like a walking trail just hiking trails in that area 
Um, so how did the rumor go around through the family that she may have died on Little Shepherd Trail if the police and nobody else knew her identity? People were keeping that clock quiet. Where was her family? If the daughter was adopted by her father's side of the family, then where was her mother's side of the family? And did they know anything? You know? She was told not to talk about it. For years, she researched the rumor. She gathered birth and marriage certificates, um, but she could never find a death certificate for her mother. Without access to the Internet or DNA testing for decades, she had no way to know the story of what happened to her mother. She had no idea that her mother was buried in the woods in Harlan County. I just knew with every bone in my body, everything that I ended up finding about her led me to know who, who she was. Um, in 2009, she and her children had been searching the internet for more information. In that same year, the National Missing Unidentified Person System posted the Jane Doe description. They gave her height and a description of her. Um, she called NamUs and quickly put her in touch with the Kentucky State Police. The family gave DNA samples. In 2014, NamUs worked with Harlan County Coroner to exhume the body of Mountain Jane Doe. In 2016, Karen Stops got a phone call telling her that Mountain Jane Doe was indeed her mother, Sonia Blair Adams. I used to pray that she would come and get me, and it never happened. Now, getting the proof, I know why she was unable to. Um, since that time, Karen has found some of her mother's family who gave her photos. Now, here's my question. Why did this, did, did they not know what had become of this daughter? Did they not ask her father has her and has given her over to his parents? What happened to him? Uh, I always wondered why she abandoned me. And that now I know that she didn't. Now I can bury her not only in the ground properly, but also the thoughts of why she was never there. I have had to come to terms with the violent death and how awful it must have been what she endured. She died a brutal murder. She did not deserve that, and whoever done this needs to be caught. Now, she doesn't talk anything here about her dad her relationship with her dad? The question is, who killed Sonia Adams? Detectives have, for nearly 50 years, had very little to work with. Today, where we would take maybe a thousand pictures of a crime scene, there wasn't any pictures to show. Um, the lack of evidence doesn't mean Detective Howard is stopping. He says that this is the closest that they've been to finding any information about Sonia. He's actively interviewing suspects and investigating leads. So far, nothing has, there have been no real, you know, leads on this. I think there's somebody out there that knows, and what we're asking for is for them to come and talk to us. So many years have passed now that I, we just want to put closure to this. Two women who spent decades searching for Sonia didn't give up hope. I really haven't been able to find any background on this woman, anything about her childhood, who her family was, where she grew up. I think that she was from Letcher County is really all I have been able to find. Um, here is the only other story that I could find on this was on WYMT. Sonia K. Blair Adams was laid to rest 40 years after her remains were found on the Little Shepherd Trail. Um, 
She had been stabbed to death in 1969. Her name remained a mystery until 2016 when DNA testing was successful to match her to her daughter. Family members say that they are relieved that they can finally put her to rest. Um, our next milestone is finding out who did it. I don't care if they are dead or alive, said her daughter. It needs to be proven. That's pretty much where this story starts and ends because um, there's really nothing. If her family, her, her uh, brothers and sisters or cousins or any, anything like that, um, nobody's come forward and talked about it. Nobody's, as far as I can see, you know, not unless maybe they were holding out for some kind of like, um, you know, interview or something like that. I don't know, but I, I haven't, I haven't been able to find anything other than the fact that she was divorced and, um. It doesn't really say anything about the man she was married to or anything about him. I'm going to check one more source here as a courier journal and see what they have to say about this. Probably the same. Um, according to the courier journal in, on June 9, 1969, Kentucky State Police said, the body has the, a, a man picking flowers on the Little Shepherd Trail uh, found this woman's body and it had several stab wounds that were so deep they penetrated the heart. She had burn marks on her legs and she was missing about 10 teeth. Police described the woman. Now it doesn't say if she was beaten in the face to that her teeth may have been knocked out or if teeth were found. It just says that she was missing about 10 teeth. This could have been just from natural causes, you know. Police described her as a woman in her 20s, weighing around 110 pounds, with light brown hair. Um, her identity remained unknown. And it just Questions I would like to have answered. Who was, who was her husband? What was the situation between the two of them? Did they have a fight, like, a, I mean, like a argumentative relationship? Were they always battling? Was he trying to take custody of the child away from her? Had she met another man and maybe started a new relationship? Um, so I would start with the relationship between herself and her ex-husband. I would, if there were any living relatives who were who were around at that time on either side, I would interview all of them, friends, people she may have gone to school with, people that may have known her from that time in her life. And I would ask around to some of her friends if she was working anywhere. I would find out if anybody remembered where she worked and who some of her co-workers might have been if she may have started seeing a new man, you know. Here is a post from Cold Mountain Cases and Homicides. I'm thrilled to announce an update to the Jane Doe found in Harlan County back in 1969. Um, she is no longer nameless. Her name is Sonia K. Blair Adams. She was a native of Letcher County, Kentucky, and she was only 21 years old when someone brutally stabbed her to death and left her naked body laying near the Little Shepherd Trail. Now, the fact that her body was naked, was this a sexual assault? Was DNA, now keep in mind, back in the 60s, DNA was not, but did they do a check to see had she been raped? Was there anything that they could take from that? Uh, if the body was so decomposed, and they said she'd been there about a month, this would have been in 
June, so, you know, um, I don't know. There's nothing to say that. Um, maybe the state police has that information. Um, here's someone who makes a comment named Mae Fulton. I can't believe I found this out. She was my aunt. I have heard my family talk about her my whole life. They told me that she was found and never identified, but they knew in their heart that it was her. I never thought they would find out for sure. This is everything I've found so far. Maybe one day they will do an update about this and say that they have some information. I doubt it. It's been 50... Fifty-three years now since this happened. It's possible that these that the ex-husband is still living. I don't know. I've not seen any mention of him, who his who he was, or anything like that. And um, if she was only twenty-one, then he probably wasn't a whole lot older than that. He would be. If he were still living, he would be in his 70s right now. The daughter hasn't said if she suspects that. Uh, if she had heard throughout her life that her mother was possibly the the Jane Doe that was found on this mountain, then were there, was there never any talk of who or how she ended up there, you know? I'm able to find about this. I hope that one day they say somebody told <laughs> you know at this point unless they have DNA if they have found other DNA on her body if there was a weapon found nearby which nobody says that there was then she may ne it may never be revealed who killed her I think the majority of people probably feel the same way I do that they should look at the husband first you always look at the spouse was there another boyfriend um, if she was taken to this place and then murdered um, there today the evidence would be blood on the ground they would search for DNA they would search for footprints and things like that. They would be cameras everywhere to say, well, what kind of cars and trucks were traveling in that area at that time of day or night in that general time frame at that time? And nobody reported this woman missing. None of her family reached out and said, you know, our daughter hasn't called us. She hasn't come home. Nobody has heard from her. If they did that, there's no reports of that in any of the stories that I've read. And it says that there was never any, that they that the state police didn't have any record of anybody having ever reported her missing. Things may have been handled differently back then. And I don't know if this would have been reported to the Letcher County Sheriff or the Harlan County Sheriff, or to the um, Harlan City Police, or the Jenkins Police, or Whitesburg Police, or whoever it might have been. Um, maybe at that time they didn't keep records of phone calls like that. And someone called and said, you know, my sister and my daughter is missing. They've not been home. And someone said, oh, well, I'll write her name down and it probably ended up in a trash can, you know. But anyway, I appreciate y'all for listening. And I don't mean to get started typing so long on these videos. But I just start giving my theories and I get a little bit carried away. But 